And when you're ready. Okay. In a future world, you have to run to get everything that you want. You have to run from spoilers. You have to run for Star Wars fanboys speaking about <laughs> episode eight. You have to run from Michael Bay directing <laughs> more Transformers movies. But then you stumble into the Maze Runner franchise. Mm. Hey, hello. My name is Raul Rodriguez. Yes. Welcome to the Monday show. Oh, Hi, my goodness. Troy. Yo, how's it going, man? It's been very good. It's been a fun week. It's been, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happened, hey? Yeah, mm. I'm also trying to do an epic voice. An epic voice. I, can't, I, I could never do it. I've never been, uh, I've always wanted to do impressions, but I've never yeah, been good at Yeah, I them. can do very little, like, <laughs> I want, and I even did it on the Smallown taping. And Ashley <laughs> Mova, she was like five persons away from us. <laughs> Like, I was with Janine, and I was like, happy Monday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That's good. That's that's amazing. <laughs> but no. And um... I was like, no, I get you my little pretty. And you're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> There's very little impression that I can do. <laughs> Unlike, like, Billy. Billy is so good at doing impressions. Oh, no. Billy can do impressions, but he also can do voices really well. Mm-hmm. But no, welcome I'm everybody telling to, him uh, to pursue doing voice work. That would be awesome. He will be very good at it. But uh, but no, welcome everybody to uh, the latest episode of the Monday Show. It is January 29th, two thousand eighteen. Um, before we get started on the regular business, I figured I could plug. Uh, last week on the channel, please check out. We had our review of Den of Thieves. Um, and we talked about Phantom Thread, but we also had my Oscar nomination prediction and reaction video come up on the channel, so please check that out and make fun of me for having uh, a lot of wrong predictions. Oh, and also <laughs> you show, you're showing your Blu-rays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I actually, I was thinking I should do a, a Blu-ray collection video and talk through everything I had. <clears throat> that would be fun. Oh my god, if I was in my home in Texas, I also would do the same. <laughs> it's funny, I have a whole bunch of DVDs too, so that's not even, like, half my collection. <clears throat> but, yeah. uh, but no, so I did that, and then we also had, uh, the, the new Pacific Rim trailer came out. So I did do a reaction on that, and let me tell you, man, I cannot wait for the new Pacific Rim movie. It looks so awesome. Yeah, I saw, I didn't saw the trailer on YouTube, but they show it on uh, Maze Runner, and... Yeah, that movie looks fun. Do I like, you know, people will probably like make fun of it for being like a another alien or another robot kind of, you know, monster movie. But man, I I yeah. totally dig it. <clears throat> like yeah, but at least have it has a story, not like Transformers. That's true. It does. It looked to me like as soon as I saw the trailer, I thought, shit, this is a movie I can only see in IMAX. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because it's just it looks it looks visually incredible but uh, no why don't we uh, we'll jump into the first segment and that is there's no place like the cinema uh this is the uh part where we talk about the movies we discussed and reviewed uh the last week um but let's jump right into it man i saw and you saw the new maze runner movie Yay! And, uh, man, it's awesome. So what, why don't you go through the experience of uh, when you went and saw it and kind of give some of your, uh, you know, thoughts on the franchise overall? <clears throat> yeah, like, um, for me, I think that I was impressed on the new one. Like, between the second one and this one, it has passed, like, two or three years because uh, the Dylan O'Brien had an accident on set. Yeah. So the movie got delayed. I remember hearing and, that. Yeah, and so first, I don't know if it was a makeup artist of the of the actors didn't age, but the movie literally looks like it picked up from the second one. Mm-hmm. It looks like they were filmed back to back. That's a yeah. thing that I really like. Uh, I really like that accomplishment. Mm-hmm. Oh, and are and, we are we gonna get into spoilers and stuff probably too, right? So, yes, so, we need to talk about that that reveal oh, in the first 15 minutes. Dude, it was so good. Um, But yeah, okay, continue. Because I'm so jealous you got to see this in uh, the 4DX. Oh, yeah. 
And of course, me as a Mexican and also me as a coupon master, I'm not going to pay $30 <laughs> for it. I only pay 4 Thank you, T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, maybe we need to ask T-Mobile to sponsor us. Yeah, movie pass is dying. Also, <laughs> yeah, movie pass hasn't tried to sponsor us yet. Even though I'm a little mad with movie pass when we're going into the movie news, but I have a thing that I have to say about movie pass. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll hold on to that. But... Yeah, yeah, but going back to Maze Runner, I really like the first one. Yeah, I like the the setup, everything. Uh, the second one, I forgot a lot of things about the second one. Okay. Um, like, when the movie picked up, the third one, I was like, who the hell is this redneck beer guy? <laughs> the guy with the long hair, I was like, who yeah. the hell is this guy? When I was seeing the, the third one, I was like, and I was like, he wasn't the second one? That's the thing that I wanted to ask you because you saw them back to back. I did, yeah. Now, um, really, like, he was. He's, he's at the end. Like, he's a part of that group that they find midway through the Scorch Trials. Um, oh, okay, so he's one of those people at the moment when Teresa comes and kidnaps the Chinese guy and the other kids. Yeah, he he was a part. Like he definitely was a part of that big battle at the end of of the second one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hey, I think that I don't remember from one and two. I think in two, we see the mother of Thomas, right? Uh, uh, yeah, at the beginning of the second movie. Because you see him getting uh, given to the, the government. Yeah, and then she gets killed, right? Um, I don't remember if she was killed. I do remember her telling Thomas, though, that uh, like she'll never see him again. Yeah, well, technically she's dead. She's dead. I'm, <laughs> sure. I, well, I'm sure. I'm sure. And then, I think I like from the score trials that I will never forget. That scene where they're going like through the tunnels mm -hmm. with the whole zombies and monsters. That, that was, was a cool awesome. Scene. Also, the building scene in the score trial. Yeah. When the building is falling down. And never forget that guy from the Game of Thrones. Oh. You're never going to get off on the score. Um, the I don't. I, obviously, I don't watch television, but you're talking about Littlefinger, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, I. Like, uh... The score trials, that's the most memorable scene. <laughs> we got out from the score. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, and, like, yeah. The other scene that I like from the score trials, that this is when I was seeing Pretty Little Liars, but remember that moment when Dylan O'Brien is with John Carlos Esposito? Yeah. And then you hear the song Walking After Midnight from Classic Klein? Yes, yes. Um, that was at the moment when. Pretty Little Liars had a season five finale when Spencer walks in into the dollhouse and she's hearing walking on the midnight and A is behind her and she doesn't unmask him and that was a cliffhanger. And I'm like, when I hear that song, when I, I, it was literally a month later of that finale, I was like, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to kill someone at the theater. <laughs> I was, that's a lot of things about Pretty Little Liars that I haven't said on this podcast. <laughs> That made me so angry. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I like. I think for me, watching all of the movies back to back. Um, I'm uh, sorry, like I'm on a PC call, and also this car is not even mine. I'm, it's not that. I'm, I'm out of gas. I'm hungry. I'm a sugar diabetic, and I'm asking for help. My credit cards are insufficient because I have to fix my car. I'm asking for help. I've been with the heater because it was cold that night. I stood at the hospital. I stopped at the car. I'm, I'm so sorry, man. I cannot help, help you. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, where were we? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the third one. Yeah, no, so I was going to say. Uh, yeah. And uh, the third one, we need to talk about. That tracing was really cool. Yeah, man. I so yeah. What I was gonna quickly say is like, when I watched, I watched all three back to back, uh, like I do with all these franchises, and I gotta say, I I love this franchise because I I didn't remember watching the first one because uh, I I remember seeing it, but I never saw the Scorch Trials when it came out. 
And uh, <laughs> and yeah, when I watched when I watched them, I only had run one complaint, really. And that's mm-hmm. the all of these movies and I'm grateful that I watched it this way. Oh, excuse me. But it all feels like one movie. They they don't feels like, It feels like one movie. Yeah, like it, it, it. They don't like the movies themselves. Don't stand alone. Like you have to watch all of them together to understand the entire story. And that's my only complaint. Like I couldn't just watch, like the first scorch, tri- like scorch trials, and feel any kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it just it doesn't give any answers to you. It just opens up all the doors of questions, and you have to almost watch this one to get any kind of resolution you know and that, that was my only yeah. biggest complaint but this is part of uh it, this is following the books and that's the thing that i want to also the thing that you just said because i remember getting uh trailers for, uh, and the uh, email from mark and it says you can see the third one without even seeing the, the other two i was like no you can't <laughs> you need to have all of the backstory yeah well i would like to know about a person that went to see the new one Without even seeing the other two, he wouldn't. He wouldn't get what Wicked is doing. Well, no, he not... wouldn't get why those zombies <laughs> why they're infected. Yeah, it's true, and it's it's funny because I think I think if anything, this third movie, um, uh, like the Death Cure, if any movie st- like could stand alone on its own, I would say it's this third one, because you know as soon as you start. You're you're on like a heist mission, right? You're trying to find mm-hmm. the Asian boy. I forget his name. Yeah. And it's like Mino. Okay, Mino, yes. So it's like it's like um, you're this third one at least kind of has like okay, you're looking for this dude. They obviously find this dude, and then the corporation ends. So I thought I thought this one had a good mm-hmm. beginning, middle, end compared to the last two, which was just all building and uh, exposition. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay. So let's get let's get into the death cure. Um, why don't we talk about the big twist? And I was so happy about this. The the original Pennywise showed up. Yeah, dude. Eyebrows. I was I actually like kind of like jumped up in theaters. I was so happy when I when he like makes his appearance because I no, love that dude. I, I when I saw it, it was only me and like all other four people. And when he took out the muscle, I was like, no, <laughs> he's alive. <laughs> dude, I love that. Um, just because I love, I, I like the dude, uh, I forget his name. Uh, what, what's that dude's name? Eyebrows. I always call him Eyebrows, Eyebrows. or the original <laughs> Terry Fukunawa of Pennywise. I always feel like that guy, if they ever do a live action movie of Toy Story, he would play the perfect Sid. Oh, yes. <laughs> But no, I did. It will I loved be Toy Story the years later. <laughs> Dude, I I I loved um also talking about like cameos and whatnot. I did not know Walton Goggins was in this. Who's that? Uh shit, he was um well, let me actually I'll bring up his IMDb. But I know uh he, oh, actually, did you see the Tomb Raider trailer? Yeah. You know the bad guy oh, in that? That guy from Justify. Yes, yes. That guy was the guy yes. that played Voldemort in Maze Runner. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Also, that guy showed up in the Big Bang Theory in the new episode that I just watched. <laughs> yeah, I love I was like, hey, dude, you showed up in that, in Big Bang Theory. You showed up also in Maze Runner 3. And also, I saw another thing with him. I know, he was in... I saw the trailer for Tomb Raider. I was like, dude. <laughs> well, it's funny because... <laughs> Um, he has that show, uh, Vice Principals, mm-hmm. um, which was with Danny McBride, and I've wanted to watch it because it looks really funny. And he was also in The Hateful Eight as well. That's where else I, I, uh, I remember him from. <clears throat> yeah, and I know him as the guy from Justified, even though I haven't seen that show. <laughs> I've <laughs> never seen it. But yeah, I loved I loved his uh, little backstory of trying to get the resistance or whatever, like those people to like step up. Um, but let's let's talk about the action because I thought I thought if anything, um, this franchise has some of the coolest like just fight sequences. And Dan Daniel O'Brien, that dude is a killer. Some of the like mm-hmm. stunts he was doing, like it makes sense that he almost died. <laughs> you know, like I t- wonder what scene was it that mm. made that accident. 
I have a feeling that's the train scene. Yes, the train, or like, I am almost thinking when he had to jump, maybe for the helicopter. Yeah. Maybe that sequence at the end. But, I don't know. I And talking about that train sequence, like you were mentioning, that, that was beautiful. Like, that reminded me, like, straight out of, like, a Western. When they're trying to stop a train, mm-hmm. you know, that was awesome. Also, that car with Giancarlo Esposito that felt very Mad Max. Oh, yeah, All yeah, of yeah. Those shots. Yeah. Also, can we, like, another thing that I loved about the Death Cure is the relationship between Thomas and uh, the kid from Love Actually. Oh, yes. That was and done he's so also on Game well. of Thrones. Is he actually? Yeah. He's a character from the first five seasons. Oh, awesome. Um,. Because yeah, I loved I loved their dynamic, um, especially that note at the end. I I started like choking up a bit. Oh. I was like I was like this is beautiful. <clears throat> You're very sensitive. <laughs> I am very sensitive. I cry. It's great, and I think I think I've also just convinced myself that it's like, if a movie can get an emotional reaction out of me, I love it. So if there is ever mm-hmm. something that is super sad, I just suit like I get I get sad now and I love it because it's it, it invests me into the movie a little bit more. Yeah, like for me, uh, talking about spoilers, because I forgot about the mom that she was referencing the Scorch trials. Yeah, and so I thought that the evil blonde lady was his mother. Oh, see, I thought that from the uh, like in the first movie. Uh-huh. We're watching. I'm like, this has to be his mom, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought overall, man, the Maze Runner was awesome. Uh, I gave it a, a. I didn't, I didn't like her random death of evil blonde lady. That she was like. Oh yeah, when she gets shot by uh, Walt or uh, Littlefinger. The Scorch. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that was that was. And also. He, he, he didn't even get out from scores. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the ending overall, what what did, uh, like, did you like how it wrapped everything up? And, like, they have their own safe haven now? <clears throat> yes, but it's just a little nitpick that I have. We've been watching it twice. Okay. I would like to have seen, and I know this because the movie, the thing that I like, that the movie wraps up. But still, there's a lot of, threads that you can like try to expand like number one when Teresa dies sorry spoiler alert we're talking (laughs) about spoilers but when Teresa dies yeah you kill the only scientist in your group uh script of book of of the author of the books yeah how is Dylan O'Brien gonna recreate the cure yeah see I agree yeah I I I, I, yeah, that's so true. And because he had and that also little because vial. technically the ending is not a happy ending. Because no, they yeah. destroyed the last city, they killed the uh, the last scientist, and they're in a safe haven that it cannot be safe for a long time. The zombies can unite as a group as World War C, and they could go <laughs> like uh, like Game of Thrones going into a walk. All the way to the safe heaven and to kill the last children. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a great point. Um, I think for me, the only thing that I really wanted to like, if I were to make this movie, I, there's only one thing that I would have done differently at the end. I thought it would have been very ballsy to kill off Thomas. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought that would because to me, I thought when when he is in the uh, the big ship and they're flying away, I thought they were gonna end it like War of the Planet of the Apes. You have mm. Thomas, who's been this leader throughout these three movies, and then at the end, he sacrificed the last part of himself. He has the the vial of the cure. So I thought mm-hmm. I thought that was how they ended it, but obviously then he is wakes up and. I thought uh, I was going to be like an I am legend ending, that we're gonna see Thomas die in the building, and Teresa gets saved, but she makes more cures. Yeah. Yeah, and to see that's a great that's a great. Uh, I mean, that's I think another problem with the Maze Runner movies is there's a, there's a lot of things in them that doesn't really make any sense. Like how it's like the apocalypse, and it's like years and years after. How can these people still f- afford <laughs> these big structures? 
and like yes. to, and even like to build the big maze like how much like money and shit that would have cost in the apocalypse just to me you have to look past instead all of, of that instead of investing uh, more cures instead of doing that elaborate maze <laughs> to get the cure <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> because talking about Netflix they did like a virtual thing with the Chinese guy in the third one for him to resemble his pain on the maze yes that will have saved a lot of money to the wicked company if they all put up all of the kids in virtual realities. Yeah, that will have saved them a or lot like, of money. Or like, or, or or like, have you have you watched Ender's Game? Yes. Or they could have done something I like love that. that movie. Yeah, I love Ender's Game. Um, yeah, I'm I so agree. angry that that movie didn't work out because I wanted the franchise. Yes. I wanted to see what was next. I agree. Um, I, I I read the that's actually a, a book that I, I I remember reading before the movie. I because the book's awesome. Yeah, but, I think there's like ten books. I yeah, remember like reading the wiki of it. Uh, but yeah, I loved I loved um, the the Maze Runner franchise. I thought it was very well done. Do you think they're gonna take the the prequel books and make those no. into movies? I heard that the writer and the director they. I don't know the, the references, but I heard like a year ago they were taking stuff from the prequel books and they added it to the Dead Cure. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. But, huh? Yeah, but I don't think they're gonna because, especially because Disney just bought Fox. Is, is Maze Runner and, Fox? Yeah. Okay, then you're right. It's over. Definitely. Yeah, it's over. And I'm happy, and this is a thing that William Bibiani said on Critically Acclaimed, I'll podcast that I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said this because he didn't like the Maze Runner tree, but he said, but this is a success because comparing to another franchises of YA novels, this one got to their last book. Mm-hmm. It got finished. It's not like he said, like, Circle the Freak. I really like that movie. And they didn't make any sequels or like Beautiful Creatures. I also like that one. You just said Ender's Game. Yeah, that was a and great one. Divergent never got finished, even though I hated Divergent two and three. I yeah. But they ne- mm-hmm. Divergent, Divergent definitely like I didn't hate it as much as most people, but like to me, like Hunger Games and Maze Runner are like awesome franchises. Like they they definitely did it right. Yeah, um, but Hunger Games. The last book they shouldn't have made the split into two movies. See, and because like because Mockingjay Part One was a lot of filler. I'm not gonna lie, like when when they decided they were splitting up Part One and Two, I didn't go see Part One in theaters. I refused, and I actually watched it for the first time with Part Two. So to me, it was all one movie, and I liked that mm-hmm. a lot. But I couldn't imagine watching that first movie and then having to wait. Like that was like the first part is definitely garbage compared to you. Like you need the whole the whole story. Mm-hmm. That was me when I saw Mockingjay Part One, and they're waiting a year to yeah. Part Two because I'm not gonna read the book. <laughs> I think. Do you think? And also with Harry Potter, I think that I like from the Harry Potter model because Harry Potter was the first one to do it. Yeah. Harry Potter Part One: Deadly Hallows was on November of 2010. And part two was in July 2011. So the wait was only like six months. See, that's good. That's so what they should have did with that it. That was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Now we're a year and a year and a half for it. <laughs> oh, also another nitpick that I have from the Maze Runner thing. Yeah. That guy from Justify, where he makes the decision to destroy the wall and all of his companions trying to destroy the buildings. I'm like, well, you guys, you live in crappy buildings near mm-hmm. to the zombies. Why you just couldn't only kill the leaders and, and make the destroy. wall again and keep the city? <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> that, they could have used all of that brand new technology and all the... Like, I saw there was grocery the, stores and there's tons of stuff there. There, I, I'm sure there was a Whole Foods right there. Like, <laughs> oh my God, why did they destroy the city? <laughs> that was the most stupidest decision <laughs> by a, an apocalyptic group. Yeah, okay, I agree. Um, but, still, but still, I really like the movie. I like the action. 
I love the resolution of it. I thought that Ivor was also gonna to die at the end. And I'm glad, yeah, that he did that he's alive. I want him still to die. <laughs> <laughs> um but, no, I think you know, I can see what Kerry Fukunawa saw in that face because when I saw those eyebrows again and those eyes, I was like, "Yeah, I could see a Pennywise here." Yeah, that's the thing. It, it def- that that is one of the the lost castings that I'll probably always want to see what what it what it could have been. Because oh, and I, I remember the guy's name. It's Will Pol- Poulter. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, he 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 was great. I think overall though, I I would give uh, the new Maze Runner a, an eighty percent. I I enjoyed it. I will probably watch it again just because I love the uh, especially the last battle sequence when they're going through the city. I thought it was filmed beautifully and like in the mm-hmm. background, all the war going on and stuff. Like that was done very very well. So it's I, I would no. I would recommend everyone to go see see these franchises, but you have to watch them back to back. Don't yes. watch them like. These, these, that's the only really thing is you got to watch them all together, or there's really no point in watching them at all. Yeah, please don't see the third one first. <laughs> don't, don't do a Troy and watch a Game of Thrones season <laughs> seven finale without even seeing season one <laughs> or two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh my god, like that's one of the things I will never forget. Like <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the wall crumbling down in Game of Thrones, that. Oh, did we lose you? We lost him. He was killed. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, he's gone now. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Hmm. I wonder who that could be. Hey. It got cut. <laughs> it did, yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. Um. Anyway, continue with uh... the Troy Game of Thrones friend. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no. Like, what would uh, what would you rate uh, the new Maze Runner? I would rate a nine. I really, really, really like it. I think that I want to know also about Fox because if I remember correctly, the score trials didn't make a lot of money at the box office. Yeah, that's yeah, I agree. But yeah. still, Fox approved to make the third one, and I'm like, do they give them more budget? Because there were a lot of explosions. Well, and like even just that city alone would have probably cost a lot to to make look like how it did. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that the budget for this one was maybe between 80 and 100 million. Yeah. But still, I really like it, and I would like to see the director make an, a pure action movie. Uh, the budget was 62 million. That's impressive. 62, and so far it's had a gross... See, Michael Bay, you can do... See, Michael Bay, you can do that amount of explosion for sixty instead of two hundred. Well, and and it it so far made worldwide one hundred and five million, so it's made its money. Yay! <laughs> but why don't uh, we'll move on and we'll do kind of like a speed round of kind of the other movies we got to see this week. Um, we'll start here with well, actually, a couple... <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll start with a couple movies that you got to see that I haven't watched yet. Um, so why don't we talk about, give me your quick uh, review of Forever My Girl. Yay! <laughs> Forever My Girl is one of the best guilty pleasure lifetime Hallmark movies that I have seen in a theater. <laughs> really? Wow. Uh, it, this is a very enjoyable, so bad movie. Uh, the positive. Jessica Roth from Happy Dead Day, she oh. was wonderful. Yeah, and, and you know, I didn't realize this because I she was the it. best actress in the whole movie. And did you know she was up in La La Land? She plays one of uh, Emma Stone's really? roommates. Yeah, I just saw that the other the other day. Uh, she was one of the friends that showed up for two minutes. Yeah, like in the apartment, they have that musical number. They're all wearing different colored dresses. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of those. Uh huh. 
So she is she's very talented. Oh. Cool. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still here. But yeah. Oh, I thought I thought you got cut out. <laughs> and and then uh this guy I oh my god, this guy is horrible. That guy that's a country singer. <laughs> he doesn't have a new phone. He only has a flip phone, and he keeps this flip phone for a purpose. He has his manager doing everything for him. As for uh, Uber, buy him clothes, uh, to buy things online. Like this country guy has cannot do a thing. There's <laughs> a scene in the movie that he wants to buy a thing from Jessica Roth, and he. Ask to the manager how to surf the internet and to buy something on Amazon. Oh, wow. He's that stupid. <laughs> wow. But overall, and so... And then he says a stupid joke, a comment that I will never forget, that even William Bibiani said it on the podcast, and I was laughing my ass off on, <laughs> on when I saw the movie. He, he gets into his father's house, the father said, oh, hey, please, Dad, how can I gonna get around here? Do you have a car or something? He's like, no, I'm going to use my car to go to give service at, at the church. And I was like, okay, can you call me an Uber? And the, that makes like a little like, bitch, please, you're in a small town. You're not going <laughs> to get an Uber. And William Bibiani and me said the same thing. How can you going to ask for an Uber if you have a stupid flip phone? <laughs> And, like, you don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> yeah. There's plot holes in a lot of... <laughs> okay, well, like, overall, then, what... Uh... Uh, overall, the story pretty good for me in a good, bad way. Mm -hmm. in, like, William Bibiani says, in the Homo Lifetime scale, this is a four. But real movie scale is a six. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome. So then, so uh, it's definitely one I'll probably not watch. I'll be honest, uh, unless it's on VOD or something, I might I check know. it out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, okay. So that was good. What about uh, this is a movie I'm dying to see, and I'm probably gonna watch at some point this week. Uh, but you got to see the post. Yes, and I was worried because I thought that this movie was going to be boring because no one talks about it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, like, like everybody, I was even in the awards is not getting a lot of awards praise, well, and I was like, "Wow, this movie has to be bad or something." The movie was pretty. Eh, it was good. It was entertaining. It didn't get me bored. I didn't mm -hmm. fall asleep. That's a positive. <laughs> that is yes. Uh you know that I don't like war stories, but this war story didn't focus a lot on the war. It focuses on how the public reacts to the war story. Okay. So I like that aspect of it. Yeah. I like Tom Hanks and Mercer were great. That's the biggest positive on it. They like they're the leads. I really like the. I like the story. I like the dialogue. It was a little slow, but Tom Hanks and Mercer was the things that keep you going. Mm hmm. That's. I like the ending of the movie. It felt like that moral say it felt like a Marvel Cinematic Universe ending. <laughs> Did it actually? Because it ends some someone discovering the Watergate the Watergate documents. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, they're setting up the they're setting up the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the plot for uh, Indiana Jones five. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. And, like, this is a thing. Even my sister ha happened to it. Even Randall and Billy. All of them went to a screening full of, full of old people. And we are the only ones. Yeah. And so there was a lot of people that were reacting to the, all of the things that were happening. I was like, I would like to know, like, them. They were reacting to what happened in that war. <laughs> How they reacted to what happened in that thing that happened with the New York Times and all of that and the Watergate. Like, there was a guy behind me. I was like, 
like, oh my god, like, oh my god, I'm gonna tell them what is next. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe for these people. <laughs> like, this is the MCU. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm excited uh, to see it, man. Uh, and like overall, I really like it. It's a name for me. Okay. I would like to the movie would have been a little, a little more fast. But seeing Tom Hanks is a big positive. Uh, Steven Spielberg directing was good, not great, but still, it was a really good watch. It's a good movie, pass. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's what I want to do. I want to probably watch it when it's uh, probably watch it when it comes out on VOD. Either that, or I'll, I'll go see it in theaters this week. Yeah, yeah, it's not a pay fifteen dollars to see it in a the theater. It's like a movie pass or wait for Netflix kind of movie. Okay, um, well, that's awesome. I'm curious now about. And this... I'm not saying that's a negative. No, 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 no. Of course. And that is not. That's not a negative. <laughs> the way that I'm telling it. It's very good positive. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about this next one then. Um, so this was another one that I've been dying to see because I love uh, Taraj P. Henson. Um, and I know Billy Brown is in it. But tell me a little bit about Proud Mary. Oh, Proud Mary. Um, I really like, you know, Taraji. She's my queen. Yeah, Cookie she's great. forever. From the <laughs> fire. I show that you still haven't seen. I know. I gotta watch it. Like... Empire is the Citizen Kane of Taraji P. Henson work. Yeah. Like, like oh my god. Tar- and uh, the movie has good action. Uh, Taraji was great. The little great also that, he, that she needs to protect. But the movie stumbles in the classic cliches of a, of a monster movie. Oh, okay. oh my god, someone got killed from a family and then all of the families had to destroy each other. <laughs> Taraji P. Henson is part of that of one family and she cannot get out from it. That The godfather is not letting her to get out from that life. And I was like, can you please do something new? Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that, that was I my one that worry. Me. But Taraji P. Henson, that was the thing that saved a little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know, like, any movie she's in, she's great. Like, I just love her personality. Um, and that was my only worry. I felt like, if anything, the <laughs> script and the plot probably would have felt very, like, unoriginal. <clears throat> the, that's the thing also. I like I like the first part of the movie. It felt like a 70s kind of movie. Mm-hmm. I really like the action of it. Um, but the second act, it was very boring. Like, and I, I, I'm ashamed to say, it, I fell asleep and I, <laughs> I saw the trailer because I never saw the trailer for primary, the second one. And that whole sequence of her killing a lot of people in a, uh, in a, in a storage house. I was like, oh, that scene that I missed. I was like, damn it. Before <laughs> that scene, that really slows down in all the cliche drama. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no, I Still, do. It was good, but that's a BOD movie. And I'm ashamed of it. Even though I love Taraji, but that that's a Netflix movie. That's a Redbox movie. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll have to definitely watch it then. Cuz I do. I I love I I just love Taraji mm-hmm. Henson and she's great. So, it's definitely a movie um I'll have to check out. What would you uh rate it? Uh a six. A six. Cool. A six out of ten. <laughs> um, but yeah, why don't uh, here? What I'll do is I'll uh, I have a list of movies here that I got to see this week, um, and I'll go through them here very quickly to see kind of mm-hmm. if, if you've seen them or what your thoughts on on them are. Uh, but the first little kind of marathon okay. I did uh, was uh, Mother, The Wrestler, and Wecrium for a Dream. And now these are all done uh, by what's the guy's name? I'm blanking. Uh, the director. Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, 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 Aronofsky. So I watched all these, and I had never seen uh, the wrestler and Requiem before. Uh, have you Have you seen them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. Uh... No, I think I only saw like half of the wrestler. Yeah, see, I think actually all three of these movies are fantastic. And mother, 
Mother is Mother is a weird one. Dude, I I still like it though. Dude, I watching it again, like I'm I love it even more. I think it's one of the best movies probably mm-hmm. of last year easily. Um because it was. It was You love it uh, you love it as much as the Razzies? <laughs> yeah, fuck the Razzies. That movie that that movie's ama- like that did not deserve <laughs> any shit. <clears throat> I loved it. Um, but yeah, so I watched that. That was great. The Wrestler, um, a- another really good character piece. Um, and, and same with Requiem for a Dream. Mm-hmm. A- another really good uh, movie about addiction. And like Jared Leto and Marlon Wayans give him incredible performances. Um, overall, I thought all of them were, were great. So I, I want to watch. Uh, I-, I have never seen Black Swan. So I want to watch that. I realize I never saw that. Oh, I have seen that one. And, and I want to watch Pi, which was his first movie. Which was like a black and white uh, film, so I want to watch that. But other than that, those those three I, I loved. Um, another another weird movie that I, I ended up watching. I went over to a buddy's house and we we saw it on Netflix, so we decided to watch it. Um, and that's the Kevin Bacon horror movie, The Darkness. And this this came out in 2016. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, man, it's it's weird. It's like this kid goes like to the Grand Canyon with his family, and then pretty much he picks up this. He picks up this supernatural entity of some sort, and then it's like a ghost story at his house. Mm-hmm. It was it was very typical. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's we. It, the one thing I appreciated about it is it's it, it is different than most uh, ghost kind of stories. Um, there's more of like animal wise and uh-huh. whatnot. Um, and like I was actually surprised because it's directed by uh, that dude I was talking about earlier, uh, Greg McLean. Who did uh, the Belko experiment and that Daniel Radcliffe movie Jungle? So yeah, oh. it was uh, it was yeah it wasn't as good as those other two uh, I thought, but overall just an interesting uh, little little movie. Uh, I gave that one a uh, uh, I think I gave that one a sixty percent. But I watched okay. that. Um, and now the next one here is a movie. Um, let me see here. Is the next one I think you're gonna love. Um, and now this is I'm just bringing up the IMDb because mm-hmm. I want to make sure I get the director right. Um, but this is this is done from uh, Tyler McIntyre, who it's like one of his first directing projects, um, and it's pretty much about like two teenage girls who's obsessed with serial killers, and like the slasher movies, and they decide to make like a YouTube channel mm-hmm. about like a real life tragedy of like a serial killer that's going on. But the 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 thing that I loved about it mm-hmm. is it's pretty much. They, they, like, I don't, this is kind of a little spoiler, um, for the movie, but I think you'll, like, appreciate this, is th- they pretty much kidnap the serial killer and try to use him as inspiration on their own killings. It's incredible, like, it, it, it reminded me a lot of, like, like, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, like, it has that kind of tone, but it also mm-hmm. is very modern and very, like, mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, dude, it was so good. And it stars um, uh, Nega Sonic Teenage Warhead from Deadpool. And it also stars uh, Storm uh-huh. uh, from Days of Future Past. So, yeah, it, it was great. Um, Craig Robinson makes an appearance. So does Josh Hutcherson. Uh, overall, it's a movie that I, I give it like a, a 75, 80%. I thought it was it was very, very well done. Mm, I need to see that one. Uh, and the only other two no, that I... movie that I want to see uh, talking about Netflix yeah I want to see that one that I haven't seen yet like my plan against girls game and I want to see the new one the the one with Jacob Tremblay before I wait yeah 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 I haven't seen that either I mean I love Gerald's game and that movie like to me was one of my favorites of last year but I had never seen before I wake and he mm-hmm. also did like hush he did that and he did one of the oh, Ouija Hush-Hush movies. Office. So I'm very curious to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, we're going to talk about Mike Flanagan in a little bit here, uh, talking about the Shining movie that he's going to be making, which is very interesting. <coughs> yes. But yeah, the only other two uh, movies I got to see um, is I watched Victor Crowley, which is uh, the fourth installment in the Hatchet franchise. Um, I was telling uh, you about this kind of earlier. It's very much like Friday the 13th on crack. It's just another slasher movie. And the killer, uh, Victor Crowley, like, kills the people and, like, 
awesome 80s slasher gory ways it's pretty it's pretty good so i would recommend it i'm not gonna i wouldn't go into the plot because honestly you got you you know what to expect it's just a slasher film but it, it's, uh-huh. it's done very very well so i watched that and i gave that like an 80 percent as well because it was it was super fun but it, yeah i mm-hmm. and you said you've cool. never watched this franchise right no i haven't seen any of them i have seen random scenes on instagram about hatchet <laughs> And I was like, well, wow, this looks cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. They have this one uh, Asian character who's throughout the entire franchise, but in every movie, he plays a different character. Okay. But it's, like, set in the same world. It's hilarious. It's it's, And they even play on that in the new movie because he's, like... Uh, do you remember the Saw movie about the guy who was cap... He wrote the book, and he was capitalizing on, the, like, the being in the trap? Yeah, that's that's like the plot of the yes. new Victor Crowley. So it's like the survivor of the last movie made a book and then has to go back to the the swamp, um, and then that's when the the murdering begins. <clears throat> Ooh. So that was that was a very good one. And then the only last one is something that just came out on Netflix yesterday, actually, and I got to watch it. Um, let me just make sure I got the title right here. Yeah, it's called A Futile and Stupid Gesture. Gesture. Um, this is about the making of National Lampoon. Uh, the original vacation? Yeah, well, it's about it's about that that dude, um, Doug Kenny, uh, and like Chevy Chase, John Belushi. Um, it has Will Forte in it. Uh, the the cast is hilarious. It's it's uh it's, oh, it was wow. pretty good. <clears throat> but yeah, like it, it goes into the story of of how they made National Lampoon and. Um, how they made Animal House, but it's like a it's like a stupid comedy done by, like Dom Hall uh, Gleason's in it. <clears throat> I'm trying to look at the other cast. Uh, yeah, Matt Ooh. Walsh, Thomas Lennon's in it, Matt Lucas. Uh, they're, they're, the cast is fantastic, actually. Uh, Ed Helms makes a, a cameo at some point, but that one was another really fun one that oh. I would recommend watching on uh, on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I need to see more Netflix movies. I just <laughs> forget that they exist. Well, it's funny because they because come out all the time. I have time. a bad tracker with Netflix movies because I have seen the horrible Adam Sandler Ridiculous 6 <laughs> Netflix movie. I watched that too. I yeah. saw the horrible Kevin James I'm a Spy movie. That was horrible. <laughs> and the only uh, good one that I have seen that is Netflix original is Hush. Hush yeah. was amazing. Hush is so good. Um, and I mean, that actually, that's going to segue yeah. us into like the next segment. I figured we could just talk about some of the cool movie news that, that came out this week. And I, I've been wanting to hear what your thoughts about this is. Like, what do you, what do you think about him doing a sequel to The Shining? That's pretty interesting. Like, I like that they're giving more recognition to this director. Because he's pretty underrated. I agree. He's probably I put like, him with like James Wan. Like, I think he's really imp- like paved a way for horror movies in the last couple of years with what he's released. So I, I love uh, some of the mm-hmm. stuff he's done. Yeah, but a lot of people know James Wan's name. Yes. Not a lot of people know Mike Flanagan's name. That's, that's the difference. That's that's very true. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting. And so, even though he did the Ouija 2 movie, that was damn good. Yeah, yeah. He did uh, the only movie that I'm still very torn with it, even though I saw it recently, like a year ago, and I was like, okay, I can forgive it. But still, the movie was so ridiculous. Yeah, The Mirror yeah. movie. I don't think I ever got to see that one. It's good, but the first time I seen it in theaters, I got so angry because the 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 finale I predicted in the first five minutes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And I thought that the movie was going to go in a different way. Hmm. But still, I forgave it years later because I liked the psychological thriller aspect of it. 
You need to see it. It's a very interesting one. Yeah, I do. I want to... Uh... I want to have a Mike Flanagan marathon and watch all of his films because he definitely is a director that I've been keeping my eye on. So I'm curious to see who they get for like Danny in in this sequel because like do you know kind of anything about about uh, the plot of, of the new one? I know very little. That is years later, and we're seeing the the kid. Yeah. discovering his powers right i think i think that's it and he and like he's trying to come to peace with like what happened when he was a kid and he's trying to figure out what the shining powers are i guess i don't know i'm, I'm curious do you have any people that you would nominate right away yeah. to, to play danny i wonder i wonder who they're gonna get mm. get like a jake gyllenhaal I was going to, uh, going to say like a Jay Gyllenhaal <laughs> or, oh, that's interesting. I'm imagining the kid who will be him right now. Maybe like, what if they got Dylan Ooh. O'Brien? I was thinking uh, Adam Driver. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm, oh my God. Yes. That's amazing. I love that choice. He has sadness in his eyes. He has suffering in his Adam eyes. Driver, dude, I'm I'm gonna have to make a, a fake movie poster and throw that on Twitter and see if we can get that popular because I think he would kill in this movie. That's it. That's mm. awesome. Also, it would be cool to see him in a horror movie. Well, yeah, and because he does have that look, like that. Oh, dude, genius! Everyone should give him give. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone deserves to give you all the money. Let's let's make you a studio head. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited uh, for so, it. Like, but this is a question that Nolan uh, Nolan Dean, our friend, he said on 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 the chat. How are they gonna set up? Because I don't know that Nolan. He's a book nerd. Yeah, yeah. He's all of the books. He says that there's a character. From the original book that Stanley Kubrick didn't use, that he's very that that character is very important in the sequel. Oh, okay. so how they're gonna how they're gonna manage that? Yeah, and it, like it's, in it's the other adaptation for the. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like technically, we never saw Jack Nicholson die; he just froze. So he could make his acting debut again in this movie. Have him and Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That would be interesting. Or if I was Mike Flanagan, I would do like a prologue of doing the Shining because, of course, not a lot of people would like to see a Shining remake. Yes. I would do like a 10 minute prologue of everything that happened in the Shining with new actors. Yeah. And then you begin with the sequel with the book. I like that a lot, yeah. Well, and or or like, yeah. I'm curious, man. This is one of those weird. This is a weird announcement for a movie because it's like they're making a sequel to the, one of the best horror, mm-hmm. well, the best horror movie I think of all time. Um, and I think they hit the nail with getting Mike. I, I think he's really going to be able to give us a great adaptation. But yeah, another another project um, that this was this is just a quick one because I didn't realize this movie was coming out. Uh, but uh, Leigh Whannell, who obviously is uh, the writer of Saw and Insidious, um, we talked about him last last episode. His movie uh, Stem comes out in 2018, and this is his next movie he directed. Okay, and, what uh, is it about? Uh, so yeah, I'm just looking at the plot. So pretty much all we know so far is it's set in the near future and technology controls nearly all aspects of life. But when Gary, a self-identified technophobe, has the world turned upside down, his only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant called STEM. Huh. And it stars uh, Logan Marshall. Okay. Uh, Logan Marshall Green, who obviously was, uh, I think he was, well, he was Shocker in Spider-Man: Homecoming. So yeah, I'm oh, curious. Okay. I'm curious. To oh, see... that guy that looks like Tom Hardy. Yes. Yeah. De- yeah, that guy. 
so I'm curious. Um, it had it, it's another Bloomhouse movie. So I'm just curious to see what uh, you know. It has a summer release date, so I'm I'm curious about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was that. I really like how Bloomhouse is doing all of those kinds of movies. Dude, Bloomhouse is killing it now, man. Like, I'm I'm excited for all of their releases. They even had that movie Truth or Dare coming out, which looks awesome. Oh, <laughs> I want to see Lucy Hill getting killed because that will that will make my pretty little life something just come true. Um, so there's yeah, there was that. I hate Arya so much. In <laughs> um, well, actually, what I was gonna ask too, what did you uh, what did you think about the Captain Marvel pictures that got leaked? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, don't know nothing about Captain Marvel. That's so horrible. I don't know. I don't think that's gonna For be. Me. I don't think that's her. St- I I feel like they're gonna color it. I don't know. I'm curious to see. I, I like how it's Brie Larson. She looks I good in the suit. So. Like I think she she looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be cool to see what happens in Infinity War if she makes an appearance. But I yeah. think she's gonna make an appearance in part two. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. That would be cool. <clears throat> but so there's that. Um, a couple other Netflix uh, news that came out this week is Charlie Kaufman is going to be writing a project for Netflix, which I mean, talking about getting like supreme talent, that's pretty awesome. Um, and then also the new Cloverfield mm-hmm. movie being uh, put put on uh, Netflix. What do you feel about that? No. I want to see the new cover for movie in the theaters. Yeah, I remember uh, watching Ten Cloverfield Lane in theaters. I want to see it in, in my computer. stupid computer. <laughs> well, actually, I, knowing Netflix though, and you being in LA, I'm sure they will do like a, a few showings. I hope so. I will try to go into the premiere because uh, I'm not gonna see it on my computer. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and Ten Cloverfield Lane. Because was... that's the thing that I hate. Oh, I, that's the thing that I just brought up. Like, uh, Magbound is one of the movies that is nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. And I was like, who? And I forget because it's a Netflix movie. Because for me, seeing a Netflix movie, I, I need to sit down, watching it and everything. And for me, I, I like to, to see a movie in the theater. Kind of guy, and I like to see a movie for the first time on my computer. Yeah, I agree 100%. That's my point of view. And I have waited two years for this <laughs> Cloverfield anthology movie. One. And Paramount is going to sell it to Netflix? I don't know, man. Cause it's curious, too, because like, I even love the cast. You had David O. Yellowall, Chris O'Dowd, uh, Daniel mm-hmm. Bruhl, Elizabeth Debicki. So, like, the cast is great. Um, the director, I mean, Julius, uh, Ona, he hasn't really done anything really before. Um, so I- I'm curious, like, I don't know. It looks like he did, uh, have you ever seen, it's a lot of short films, but he did a movie called The Girl is in Trouble. Starring, uh, Wilmer, no. Wilmer, what's his name? Val, Valder or something from, uh, the 70s show. <laughs> Valderrama or Vilder, anyway. Uh, oh. yeah, I'm curious. Cause, oh, Wendo Valderrama. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's gonna be on Netflix now, and oh. hopefully it just he, means it comes out that sooner. That guy's still alive. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that. Um, I don't know. I'm curious to see it, and hopefully we it, it has like a limited release so we can catch it in theaters. But if not, I'm just happy that we're getting another Cloverfield movie. <laughs> The thing that I'm afraid of, because there's rumors that Paramount didn't want to pay for the reshoots of the movie because J.J. Evans wasn't available because he's doing episode nine. And they say also there's another rumor that the producers didn't like the finished product. And so that's why they're sending it to Netflix because they know that the movie's going to fail. So that's the thing that I'm afraid of. Is this movie going to be crap? Because it's going to Netflix. Of oh, this movie is good, but the producers don't believe in it. Yeah, I... that's the thing that I'm worried. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm curious to see uh, to see what happens with it. But I don't know what it's like. Another project that I'm, I'm like another thing that came out this week that absolutely was like just bonkered my mind is what the hell's going on with this Ryan Reynolds Clue reboot? Like this, this was so out of the blue for me. Mm-hmm. What do you, do you are you like? Are you excited Maybe. for a, a new Clue movie? I would like to. Um, I have never even seen the original. Oh, so dude, the if original. Ryan Reynolds. I love the original. Like a meta comment of it. I would like to see like a Ryan Reynolds character. He maybe he's like the game master. He's introducing the the movie to us like the Twilight <laughs> Zone, and he's like, now we're gonna see the Colonel Master makes a dumb move, and he makes <laughs> look to the screen, but the characters cannot see him. I could see a Clue remake working that way, well, like I... a very meta kind of the. Well, not, and the thing that, for me, which kind of gets me a little bit excited about it, is, is it's going to be written by Rhett Reese, who did write Deadpool and Zombieland. So it has a good writer behind it. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds is hilarious. So, yeah, man, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, uh, on to who else they cast. Oh, please cast Jensen Ackles as one of the characters. <laughs> I want to see Jensen Ackles from Supernatural in a movie. I, I, he's, uh, that would be awesome. I, I, he's a great talent, so. <clears throat> but why don't, uh, I, and this mm-hmm. next thing here, um, I mean, that's kind of the movie news. Nothing super incredible that, that came out. Uh, except, I do want to talk to you about this because we haven't talked about it yet, and I mentioned that you can check out my nominations and reaction video, but why don't we talk about the Oscar nominees? I was surprised that get out got nominated for best picture really that was one of the biggest surprises for me i didn't expect that i thought that get out was gonna be only a script that yeah. was not a prediction i got surprised man i'm just like it is awesome the other surprise was that the post only got the post only got two well yeah movie and Meryl Streep. That's impressive. Well, that's the thing. So, like, why don't we start, like, from the top here. Uh, Best Picture, right? We got uh, Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, The Winner, The Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Yes. (laughs) Actually, what do you think? Um, What do you think is going to win? I'm going to make you this question that my friend Molly... Me, you can choose a movie that you will take out from that list. What would you take out? Oh, easily, I would take out the Darkest Hour. Easily, Darkest Hour, and Good I would choice. Re- I would replace yeah. it with Split. Good choice. <laughs> I would take out Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, and what was the other one? Um, and Phantom Threat. Yeah, that's the I only other one. I will take those three out, and I will put I will put Coco, Split, and I forgot the other one, but I'm gonna give it to you. I will put out Logan. Logan, just yeah, to yeah, make yeah. you happy. Thank you. I that's another one I would have loved to see. Um, but other than that, like no no big surprises for me. Uh, it was it was interesting to see Phantom Thread get nominated. That was the only one that I was like, I wasn't sure if it was gonna get like pick up enough steam. But yeah, uh-huh. I, I hope Get Out wins. Mm, <laughs> I, I, like I think it would be awesome for a horror movie to win, even Shape though of... I love Shape of Water. For me. Best picture is between Shape of Water and Three Billboards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Three Billboards. Oh, it's tough. I, this is tough. I will be. I, I I will be. If Shape of Water doesn't win, win Best Picture, <laughs> but I wouldn't be that sad if Three Billboards wins. Yeah, I agree. Because I know I know Del Toro's probably Three Billboards was so so good. Well, and like I'm no. I'm, I'm positive the, Del Toro is going to get Toro the directing. Doesn't win. 
if Guillermo del Toro does it with Best Director, I'm going to riot the WTU. <laughs> I will too. The only person I would be okay with winning over del Toro is uh, Greta Gerwig. I think it would be cool to see her win, like a female director. But, no, why don't we... Why, I agree. But let's jump into the next segment here, or the next uh, category. Uh, actor in a leading role. You had Timothy Chalamet, Daniel Day-Lewis, Daniel Kaluuya, Gary Oldman, and uh, J- James Franco. No, just kidding. Denzel Washington. <laughs> I'm, I, oh, you bastard! <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that Denzel Washington got the nomination for this one. Yeah. Did you saw Roman J. Israel? No, but I just realized that it comes out on VOD really soon, so I'm going to watch it as soon as it comes out. But this is the guy yeah, that, this I is the Nightcrawler one, too. right? Mm. The same director as, as Yeah, Nightcrawler. like for me, in that category... Mm. I, would, I would remove... That's a very hard one, because also Gary... O- I would remove Daniel Gary Day-Lewis. Gary is in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would remove also Daniel Day-Lewis. And give it to James McAvoy for Split. <laughs> Me too. Um, so, yeah, that, that was Me that. Me too. Like, I'm so angry that... Oh, this is a thing that we need to investigate, but I was seeing as SGU last week, and Jack and me were having a discussion on the live chat. Mm-hmm. He said that Split didn't got, got any awards consideration because the world premiere for Split was in September 2016. And I'm like, no, the world premiere for Split happened. And not even it was a world premiere. It was a screening in an AFI of November because Chris Tubman and Mark Ellis yes. saw it in that screening. I remember but the that, movie yeah. got released officially on 2017 in january so it could have run for awards well and i look yes, at it like on january 2017 like if they nominated get out which came out in the early 2017 they could have easily nominated split yeah but yeah you know, i mean and even yeah like... but they they made the the oscar race and the consideration for get out because get out keep the message because we're living now in the Trump era. Yeah, so that's, that's why Get Out was more relevant. Yeah. No, I agree. But yeah, so that was the actors. Uh, the actress category, I was not surprised at all. Uh, Sally Hawkins, Frances McDormand, Margot Robbie, Saoirse Ronan, and Meryl Streep. Nothing, nothing here. For I... me, yeah. I will take out I will take out Meryl Streep. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's had enough. Because Meryl Nisa... Yeah, she had enough. She's 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 been... Like, also, Meryl needs, like, a... Just Meryl, give... I love you, but you need to, you need some rest from all of the parties. <laughs> you, on... can, you can give her a year of on, not on, going. Honestly, like, can we just give her the Lifetime Achievement Award already and just let her retire? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I would take a Meryl Streep, but I don't know who would I add. That's a hard one. Yeah. I'll add... Because... Brie Larson. Oh, Margot actually, Robbie, she's already in there. Uh, the the only one I would maybe add instead is uh, Daphne Keene from Logan. I think she was awesome. Or or what about the kid from... Uh, uh, mm. The... Fra- uh, What's it called? With Willem Dafoe, uh, the Florida Project. There's like there's a kid in that which was was awesome too. So she could have been nominated, but I don't know. I haven't seen the Florida Project. It's it's uh it's good. It's definitely a movie you have to see in theaters though. I think like sitting at home watching mm. it was like was kind of boring. Like I would love to have seen it on the bigger screen. But yeah, what uh, who oh, do you, who for do you... best actor? Uh, just to make my prediction, I would like for best actor to win. Uh, it was Gary Oldman, Daniel Day Lewis, Daniel Kaluuya. What was the other two? Uh, Timothy and Daniel Day Lewis. 
I think Timothy would be cool. To I win. would like to meet Tim- Timothy Chalamet to win. Yeah, he he's. But they're gonna give it to Gary Oldman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it would be cool to see Daniel win as well. But I think I think you're right. Oh, give it Daniel to Gary has Oldman. like a Daniel has a like Daniel has a lot of awards already. <laughs> But they give him an award, an, an award nomination just for drinking Starbucks. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, who do you think is going to win for actress? I probably will give it to Frances McDormand or uh, oh. S- Sally Hawkins deserves it for me. Yes, Sally Hawkins deserves it. I'm between Sally and Frances because. Frances McDormand, she's the whole movie in Three Billboards. Her dialogue, her angriness, her the way that she moves, the way that she walks, her stares. Yeah. But in The Shape of Water, everything is through silence. It's through her emotions and her eyes. That's a very hard one. I will be not angry or sad if one of them wins. Or even like, even if Saoirse Ronan wins, I won't be mad. Because that was a great performance from her and Lady Bird. And also, Margot Robbie, she was also great. Yeah. Like, I gotta say, me, this is... that's the most tight. Yeah, you're right. That's this the is... most tight nomination uh, category. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, I agree 100%. Because all of them deserve it. To be, except for Meryl Streep. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Meryl I'm Girl, sorry, Meryl. but the post, that was not your... It was a good performance, but that's not an Oscar-winning performance. <laughs> no, well, when you put it next to Margot Robbie and, it, and all the other performances, there, it doesn't doesn't hold. Yeah. Actually, in, in the next category here was another one that I was kind that's of surprised. Uh, that's an actor in a supporting role. So you had Willem Dafoe, Woody Harrelson, and Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards. Uh, Richard Jenkins and then uh, Kevin Spacey for all the money in the world. Oh my God, <laughs> Richard <laughs> Jenkins! That was an awesome surprise. I thought he was gonna get snuffed, but I was so ha- happy that he got nominated for his role in Shape of Water. See, when the, I'm actually also surprised that Christopher Plummer got his nomination. He's only getting the nomination because he filmed it in five days. No, he is a hundred percent, a hundred, yeah, easily. And I don't think, I don't think three billboards could have had like Woody Harrelson. I don't think needed to get nominated. They should have put the the kid, the uncle from no. Call Me by Your Name. He should have been nominated. Yes. No, oh, that that's true. I will take a Woody Harrelson, and I will add. The uncle for Call Me By Your Name. Or I will add Bruce Willis and his cameo and split. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Agreed 100%. Um, so there's that. Then there was imagine the... Imagine that someone... Imagine that someone won a Best Supporting Actor role just to say, Mr. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was the uh, supporting actor. Uh, supporting actress... Uh, I'm surprised that, uh, I mean, so the nominations were uh, Mudbound, Mary J. Blige, uh, the mom from I, Tanya, the mom from Lady Bird, uh, Octavia Spencer, and Leslie Manville. And I was surprised that Phantom Thread picked up a supporting actress nom. Yeah, I'm surprised. Talking about Phantom Thread, the best actor in that movie, in Phantom Thread, the part that I saw was the girl. Uh, Vicky Creeps, mm-hmm. and she got snubbed. Yeah. I, and I like think... I said, Daniel Day-Lewis only got nominated because he was holding a Starbucks cup. Like, <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, is, he's an actor that I don't understand. I don't get it. Uh, he's a good actor, don't get me wrong. But he's so overrated mm-hmm. for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, 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 what like you're I saying said, before. this guy gets nominated just for pick up a taco in Jack in the Box. <laughs> um, I do think, though, that like in the supporting actress role, uh, Alice and Janney has to win, right? Like, she's definitely going to... Um, 
Like, I think she's the one that deserves yeah, it. Yeah, it's between Alice and Johnny. And for me, it's between Alice and Johnny and the mom from Lady Bird. Yeah, Lori Metcalf. She was great, too. Both of them. Yeah. And act, supporting actor, it has to be Sam Bravo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or they will give it I to Christopher Plummer. I will be angry Plummer. if Christopher Plummer wins. Yeah, but I can see them giving it to him. I will be so angry. <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so there was that. What about... Uh, okay, so, I mean, animated feature film. Obviously, Coco's going to win. Yes. Like, the Boss Baby, Breadwinner, they have Fer Ferdinand. None of them will even come close. I cannot believe that Baby Trump got nominated. <laughs> yeah, well, I, actually, I would have probably nominated Cars 3. Everyone forgot that came out, and that movie was awesome. <sighs> I like that movie. That was fun. That movie was so forgettable that I forgot that it existed. <laughs> <laughs> Most people did, though. I think I was the only person that remembered. But, yeah, Coco's going to win that. Then we got... Uh, <laughs> Uh, cinematography, give it to Blade Runner. Has to. Has to go to Blade oh, Runner. Oh, yeah. Uh, if cause... it's in Blade Runner, oh, the guy that made Shepard Water. Oh, yeah, Dan uh, Lawson. I agree. Darkest Hour won't get it. Dunkirk won't. Mudbound. <laughs> it has to. Roger Deakins deserves it at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, costume design. Beauty oh, he could beast. wait twenty. He he could wait twenty years to make Blade Runner two thousand fifty nine. <laughs> yeah, that would be sad. That movie will still make no money. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you got um, the cinema or for hey, costume design. Maybe we we could we could we, we could pitch each other to the Red Blade Runner two thousand fifty nine in twenty years. <laughs> I would be down. I'd do it only if Ryan Gosling is in it. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah. Old, old man Ryan Gosling. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, the next category, costume design. You got Beauty and the Beast, Darkest Hour, Phantom Thread, The Shape of Water, and Victoria and Abdul. Oh, it's between Shape of Water and Phantom Thread. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's funny, actually. The, the costume designer for Beauty and the Beast and Darkest Hour is the same same lady, so she got nominated twice. Oh, oh! I didn't know that. So she could probably—I could maybe see them giving it to her because she was nominated twice. But yeah, mm, I agree. Interesting. Um, best director, give it to either Del Toro or Gerwig. Uh, Christopher Nolan yes. doesn't need it. Paul if Thomas Christopher Anderson. Christopher Nolan. If Christopher Nolan wins, I'm gonna be so angry. <laughs> Yeah, I... no, no, no. You you uh, will not hear. You will hear me ranting of Christopher Nolan for weeks. <laughs> we'll have to make a Christopher Nolan hate podcast. <laughs> yes. Um. So there's that. I mean, I wouldn't hate if Jordan Peele won because that would be cool to have him have an Oscar. But Del Toro has this in the bag. Yeah, the Toro deserves it. Yes, yeah. Like, he has waited years for it. Like, I know that Jordan Peele make a great movie, but... Oh, but Guillermo has to win. I will, I will be angry if Guillermo doesn't win, but I will, be, I will not be that angry if Jordan wins it. Yeah, that's me too. But uh, then, yeah, moving on, I guess, to more of the technical awards. Um, film editing, you had Baby Driver, Dunkirk, I, Tonya, Shape of Water, and Three Billboards. I think Baby Driver probably will, will win it. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. What about, uh, what, what's your pick for original score? So you got Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, Shape of Water, Last Jedi, and Three Billboards. That's a hard one. I'm between... Has John Williams have won an Oscar? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's a thing that I don't know. If he hasn't, mm. then give I'm it to him. I'm between... 
I love the music in The uh, Shape of Water, though. I'm between... Yeah, I'm between Shape of Water and Star Wars. Because I honestly, I couldn't tell you what the sound, the score for Three Billboards or Dunkirk were. I, I can't, I couldn't hum it. Yeah, the the score for Three Billboards, I, I don't remember there was a score in there. <laughs> it was silent. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and Dunkirk, it was all explosions and bullets. I don't remember a score Wah. there. Wah. <laughs> that was the problem. That was the score. That was Hans Zimmer. Uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Um, he's a one no uh, he's a one no pony. <laughs> so you got that? Uh, Coco, remember me? Has to win original song. I hope this is me. Doesn't yeah, win. Yeah, I'm surprised that Redbone. I'm surprised that Redbone by Charlie Gambino got now for Get Out. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That would have been awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah, don't... but yeah, it's between "This Is Me" and "Remember Me" yeah. and "Best Song." Uh, production design. I don't know. Give it to so "Beauty and the Beast," "Blade Runner," "Dunkirk," "Darkest Hour," "Shape of Water." Either "Blade Runner" or "Shape of Water," probably. Oh, uh, "Shape of." Yeah, "Blade Runner" or "Shape of Water." Um, I mean, other than like, oh yeah, sound editing, ba- "Baby Driver," "Blade Runner," "Dunkirk," "Shape of oh. Water." Star Wars. Mm. And that's the same nominations for sound mixing as well. Well, mixing, it has to be Star Wars uh, or Blade Runner. I hope and editing. Editing for Baby Driver? It could be Shape of Water or Blade Runner. I feel, I, I, I don't know, I oh, feel yeah, like Baby, Baby Driver, Driver might, so might get it just because of the technical of, of that movie was just incredible. But yeah, I don't... Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then visual effects. This is one that I'm so stoked that Kong Skull Island got nominated. And War for the Planet of the Apes for that matter. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have two monkey yeah, movies. Yeah, War is okay. Uh, th- that has to win, hey? Either that or Blade mm-hmm. Runner. Blade yeah, Runner. Yeah, Blade Runner or War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, what about writing adapted screenplay? So you got Call Me By Your Name, The Disaster Artist, Molly's Game, Logan, and Mudbound. That's a hard one. I I want Logan to win. That's a very hard one. Yeah. Logan would be awesome. I'm I'm between Call Me By Your Name. Is Call Me By Your Name or Disaster Artist? Yeah. Yeah, I can almost see Aaron because Sorkin I would like getting also it. Maybe Molly's going to win. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but call me by your name was so written from so adaptive well. standpoint. Yeah, it was a good script. Yeah, I agree. I can see that. Um, and original screenplay. Big sick. Hopefully wins. Oh, yeah, but there's also Shape of Water in there, right? And Three Billboards. Yeah, Three Billboards, Shape of Water, Lady Bird, Get Out, and The Big Sick. Uh, that's a hard one. Like, I want The Big Sick to I win because be, it's the only like, non. Original screenplay. I want Three Billboards to win it. Yeah, that, that script was because also incredible. Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of dialogue that I will never forget from Three Billboards. Some very memorable, memorable script. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Even I though I would like Big Sick to win, but it's going to be Three Billboards or Get Out for Best Original Screenplay. Yeah, I could see Get Even Out. Even though Get Out was so predictable for me, but Get Out could win it for screenplay. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for the Oscars when they come out. We're going to have to probably do uh, um, our reaction videos to that when, when that comes out in March. Because the nominations, I think, if anything, the show will probably be great. 
Do you think uh, they're going to open it up with uh, Hugh Jackman singing This Is Me? I hope so. I, I can see that. <clears throat> I don't know who's, who's going to... Who's gonna be the host? Uh, this Kimmel again. Oh, uh, oh. I like Kimmel, but why didn't they give Conan O'Brien to the to host the, the Oscars? That would be so cool. I I still really want Ricky Gervais. I love him hosting. He's so savage. That, oh, Ricky Gervais. He will be so savage with the <laughs> everything. With the perverse. Yeah, jokes. true. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, why don't we... Or Tina Fey, oh, Tina yeah. Fey and Amy Poehler. That would be good, too. As the host. Let's get James Franco to do it. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> but, uh, no, why don't, uh, we'll jump to the oh. last segment here before we, uh, call this an episode. And this is, uh, what's opening this week. And I pretty much told you all of these movies last podcast because I messed up. <laughs> But we got uh, uh, yeah. Winchester comes out this week, which is obviously the one about the house that keeps changing with 100 rooms. I'm excited for uh, that. For me, that's Helen, Helen, Mirren, Helen Mirren in a horror movie. I'm completely sold. I don't need to know a thing. Yeah, exactly. The perform- and, well, and Jason Clark is there's also in it. There's posters of Helen... There- yeah, there's posters of Helen Mirren only wearing a veil. I was like, I don't need to know more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i agree i'm excited for it um and then the only other ones coming out um are like that's the only big movie coming out this week um the rest are all vod so you have uh braven which is a jason momoa mm-hmm. movie coming out and it looks like he's like it looks like a standard action movie with with jason momoa and then uh-huh. you have another one coming out with uh you know the girl that's in deadpool um uh, the bad villain I forget her name um, Uh huh Yeah 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 Carla Gugino Yeah 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 she No has no her... no that's, that's yeah. not her name or, No Gina Carino Very very close <laughs> That one uh, And she has a yeah, movie very close. She, has, she has a movie called uh, Scorched Earth Coming out Scorched How? What is the name? Scorched Earth Scorched <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you got that coming out. Then... Is the guy from Game of Thrones is gonna be in that one? <laughs> I hope so. I hope that guy's in every movie. <laughs> um, but then other than that, later this week, yeah. uh, Suburbicon comes out uh, on VOD, so I'll definitely check that out. Oh, that movie, that movie was crap. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I enjoy it. Um, I, I want to see Matt Damon's <laughs> performance. <clears throat> But let me see. Uh, so you got that coming out, and you also... Oh, that's it. No, that's all that's coming out this week. It looks like there was uh, another one called... Oh, my thing keeps messing up. Um, yeah, there was a couple other limited releases, like Just Charlie and Lies We Tell, which is a Harvey Cattell movie. But other than that, yeah, I guess we're uh, Winchester. Yeah, but, Troy... But in two weeks... Oh. The most acclaimed, awaited cinematic masterpiece of all time is going to debut the ending to Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> hey, we're going to have to give our big spoiler reviews for that. I'm excited. <laughs> and we're not going to miss the climax. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know what? Why don't we just end There's this episode like that? There's a lot of posters. <laughs> There's posters. On bus stops, there's posters on malls. I says, "Don't make the climax." <laughs> oh oh God. my God! But uh, like Black Panther is gonna make like three million dollars. This is just a great. It's gonna make like two hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that would be insane. Could you imagine? Oh, but uh, yeah. But yeah, with that being said, thank you everybody for listening. This has been a brand new episode of The Monday Show. Uh, You can check back um, in a couple hours. We're going to have a brand new episode of Recaps and Rants uh, with Raul or the alternative uh, title that I don't watch any television shows. Uh, We're going to have that come out. We're going to review a couple of the shows we saw this week. 
Uh, but anyway, man, anything you want to plug? Anything coming up that uh, you're excited about? Um, yeah, like check out their past episodes, and also uh, check, you can follow me at Robedo RDC. You can follow Troy at Troy Lawson on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, and don't forget. You need to survive the score. <laughs> <laughs> the scores. Peace out, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs>